Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I think I'm live now. I, 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 let me just double check one thing before I start, as usual, because sometimes we've got these glitches. But uh, yes. Well, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, this is Silver and Sidiel, and welcome to Business and Lifestyle Live. And uh, we slightly have a good, slight hiccup earlier, um, five minutes, but nevertheless, still, we have Miss J. Tav. And one of the reasons why I had to slow down a while ago because <laughs> I interviewed these two ladies um, in 2017 and I had to really keep saying Jen and Jay, Jen and Jay. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jen was able to make it today. Um, I think she's maybe social distancing from us. <laughs> <laughs> but we got, we got one of the, de one, one of the two de viewers, if anything, of Hustle and Heels. Okay, yeah. so it's Hustle and Heels tonight with your tips in Business and Lifestyle Live. And uh, let me just start off by just saying, uh, Jay Tav is very much what we call the connector of the duo, focusing on building business, relationship, and partnership, which can come through networking and collaborative working to create sustainable wealth. But also, Jen Scott is the visionary behind Hustle and Heels. So she will also stay behind the scene and make sure everything is happening, like what she's doing now. <laughs> Leaning on the creative direction, strategic developments, and growth of a brand uh, with over 12 years experience. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, in 2017, I was joined by these two ladies on the red chair, and I've been showing that video all over again because <laughs> I, I believe that it was a great moment. And I believe it was just after, was it before Brexit? It was just before Brexit or after Brexit? When it Brexit, before, Brexit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was questioning you guys, in or out, Brexit or not Brexit. And, and I think one of the thinking that you guys were saying is that, listen, we're innovators. Anything come, we can take it. <laughs> so listen, yeah, how, how, yeah, how, how is it with COVID, I mean, at this time and, and you guys? Yeah, well, first of all, let me say thank you for inviting yeah. us on to the show. It's really great to maintain that relationship and come back. You're yeah. doing great things and it's great thank to see that. Right. So thank you initially. Um, in terms of COVID and how we're coping, I mean, we are, as we said then when we were talking about Brexit, just adapting and making sure that we're pivoting and being, you know, making sure that we're still available, still um, accessible to the network. We've got a huge network of business owners that, um, you know, usually they're able to connect with us face-to-face -face on a monthly basis. But right mm -hmm. now what we've done is we've um, pivoted. So we've taken the business online to the extent that we can. And actually we've found that it's opened us up to a wider reach because, of yeah. course, online you can reach people that are – you know, there's no boundaries in terms of location. So that's been great for us. And it's been great for some of the network that haven't been able to tap into some of the um, more skills based events that we usually do. So that's been the biggest change that we've mm -hmm. dealt with. And as I say, just making sure that we're accessible and on hand for people if they need anything in terms of business support. So, so tell us now, give us a sort of breakdown of uh, Hustle and Heels. Are you guys hustling in heels? I know it's maybe the same question I asked before. Are you in heels and you're hustling around? What is the essence of Hustle and Heels? This, this, yeah, that? so Hustle and Heels is a business support network which works to support the underrepresented um, entrepreneur and help them make a, um, you know, turn their side hustle into their main source of income and help them to start, improve and grow their businesses. And we do that through a variety of um, different events, resources, tools and just different things that they can tap into to really help them on that business journey so we find that a lot of startups begin and they come about because of a passion you know someone's passionate about hair care or they're passionate about well-being or um you know yes. fitness anything they have this passion and they recognize that there's a gap in the market and they can actually fill that with whatever it is that they um they're able to provide whether it's a product or a service but you know, business is about much more than just having that passion. And so we try to fill the gaps by providing the skills, resources, workshops, connections that people really need to take their business to the next level. Yeah. But Jay, one of the reasons why I invited you guys on, um, not because I have a, a relationship with you in the past, but because during this period of time with COVID-19, I, I believe that 
and, and you recognize it as well. A lot of people are at home. Many people are actually checking their vision, re-envisioning themselves. Some are looking back at their dreams because they are now quiet. Everybody was so busy before, but they're now quiet. And I was watching you on one of your face, one of your Instagram live, and uh, where you're talking about some tips in um, saving at this time, which was very crucial. And uh, and you're talking about reducing expenses where possible. Uh, as, as one of the tips, what, what can you say about that? Because that was why, that's the reason why I, I, I reached out to both of you, because I said that, that's very crucial how people can save at this time and reduce expenses yeah. where possible. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things, isn't it? We don't ordinarily have the, um, should I say, the luxury of being able to pause our expenses. Um, yeah. You know, we're in a situation where everyone is affected by the same thing worldwide. So ordinarily we may in isolation be going through a financial drought, but, you know, that doesn't matter to anyone else who's expecting their bills to be paid. But this mm. is a one-off opportunity, um, uh, you know, really for us to take advantage of some of the schemes that are out there. And so what I was talking about in that post was really about looking at our finances and how we can pause them for a month, two months, three months, depending on how much longer this carries on. So at that time, when I posted the video, it was quite towards the beginning of the lockdown yeah. period. Um, but, you know, we don't know if it's going to be lifted in the next few days. But that was really about, you know, thinking about what are the really big expenses that you've got going out on a usual yeah. um, basis and looking at, you know, if you have been furloughed or if you have even lost a job or you're losing contracts, um, you haven't got that same amount of money coming in. So it was really about looking at where you can slim down your expenses. And so what I would say and what I said in that video and what I would say to anyone that hasn't done that already is really just speak to all of your service providers, you know, call them up and yeah. say, what are the payment holidays that I can take? What are the options? What have you guys got in place for people that are being, you know, affected by COVID? Um, yeah. And so that's really an opportunity just to say to them, I need, I need to pause my payments. And it's not to say that you won't have to make the payment going forward. It's just that you've got a temporary delay whilst, you know, the finances that you would usually expect to be coming in may be paused or greatly reduced. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing that I think is really important for people to remember with that as well is also speak to your providers about the interest and how they're going to deal with that interest portion. So if it's, for instance, a credit card payment that you're usually making, there's likely to be interest um, accruing or if it's a mortgage payment or, um, you know, if it's something other than, say, for instance, rent that you may be paying to your landlord if yeah. you've got a business or um, if it's, you know, gas, electricity, internet, anything like that. But just speak to them about the interest and how they will deal with that going forward because that's one thing that people may be caught out by. You know, they ask for the delay and then when the payment resumes, they thinking, well, this is, why is this higher than uh, what I'm expecting? And it could be that interest portion. So just make sure you've got as much of an understanding of everything that's entailed with the payment holiday and then make that decision yeah. as to whether or not it makes sense for you to do going forward. So therefore, what you're saying then is that uh, it is for persons who are maybe directly affected because you have persons who are still working and might say, hey, let me see if I can cash in on this, I mean, even though I'm working, everything is okay. Look, to be honest, Silborn, it really is down to the person. Everyone's going through this. So a lot of these companies yeah. are expecting people to be calling them and asking them about payment holidays. And what you find is when you call them, they may ask you, are you affected by um, COVID? Um, you know, or have you got any financial impact? And it's really down for the person to make that assessment. Yeah. You may be working right now, but actually you may not know what the position is going to be next week. So you may be wanting to think ahead and make those um financial yeah. provisions for now so you know to say that um you, you're affected by coronavirus or not the actual virus but by the impact of covid um or you, there's a level of uncertainty around your finances yeah. um you know that's yeah. that's also an option and it's really down to you to make that decision as to whether or not you think it's the best thing to do for yourself long term well, ladies and gentlemen, that is that is really good tip there. You know, 
and, and what you have just said a while ago is a discussion I was having with someone the other day that even though things are okay in a sense because one is working, but you've got to think ahead. That's what you're actually saying. Um, I lost Jay, Jay there for a bit, but I'm sure she will come back. But um, what she was actually saying is that the time now when you have uh, and everything is working okay, you know, think about at the same time of reducing your expenses by calling up your banks, calling up persons that you owe, I mean, like car payments, um, everything like that, because while the lockdown is actually going on at present as it is, but at the same time, um, we, we don't know how it will turn out eventually. So I think those are some very good tips there um, and pointers what um, um, Jay is saying. Now I'm just smiling because I'm just saying to myself that um, even if Jay doesn't come back, well, that was a fundamental tip that she mentioned there, but I'm sure she's gonna come back. So I'm just gonna, ah, see, see the good timing there? I know, so, uh, so she's actually back, back in, Live one two three. Hi. Hey. Apologies. Yeah, I, 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 I did it perfectly. Don't worry. I did it perfectly. I did a summing up at the same time. When you go back, you're gonna look and and all, and all it is is that you went and had some water. You, I just say you went to have some water. <laughs> so, okay. Good. So the second one, the second point now that you have, uh, Jay. And um, and and I, and I think you're talking about. Um, building and nurture your network yeah yeah absolutely um i mean hustling hill started out and a very big part of what the network is is about you know building that network building a community building your tribe and it's about having those people that know exactly what you do and they are your advocates they are your supporters and you know your network is really um key to success in business you can't get through business alone mm. just like life you can't go through it alone and so the network that you cultivate and nurture is really important to the su success of your business and exactly as you were saying you know now a lot of people are finding yeah. that they've got a lot more time on their hands so this is a great time to reconnect with people that you may have lost contact with or um you know usually you're just too busy or they're too busy running around doing things separately but that network that we have of business supporters is really key because it does a number of things yeah. so it gives you as a business owner um, accountability because you know that they're expecting something from you whether it's a product or a service so you have to show up even when you don't want to it also gives you the opportunity yeah. to extend your reach because you're able to tap into their individual network. So if you've got a network of, let's say, 10 potential customers, but actually you are able to tap into the networks of your other business owner, um, friends or friend tours, mentors, whatever you want to call them, then you're able to tap into their networks as well. And, you know, invariably they will act as advocates for your brand because they will know what you're doing. And if someone says, you know, I'm looking for a personal trainer, then they'll say, okay, yeah, fine. I know, I know Ben and he does, he does personal training. So having a rich network of people that you're able to call on yeah. for business support and that you're able to also support in business is really key to extending your reach and, um, you know, just getting out there. They're able to be in rooms that you're not in. So if, you know, if you're not in the room, actually someone from your network is and they can advocate on your behalf. They can talk about what you're doing. They can talk about your services. And it's, it's an unbiased opinion as well, isn't it? So so it really helps to validate whatever it is that you're doing. And that, that's very interesting what you said. So have you, uh, Jay and Jen, have you found that in this period of time now with Zoom and with the social media, you're able to navigate some other areas of networking, which you have maybe never navigated before in light of taking advantage of where we are at? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we usually have a startup meetup each month and we do that in partnership with Microsoft. So we usually go down to their venue um, once a month yeah. and we have a business event. But, you know, since we haven't been able to do that, we've taken those events online. And so the network has really extended because other people that 
are not able to usually travel to um, the Microsoft Store, you know, they're able to tap into the network online and they're able to really build their skills. And then beyond that, we've got a WhatsApp group. So we encourage people to continue that conversation offline as well. So once the webinar is over, that's not it. Like keep the conversation going. Let's keep supporting each other on social media, um, you know, word of mouth and that's where we're really trying to encourage people to cultivate that network of other business owners that are going through the same struggles as, as you, which is also yes. very comforting in, particularly in times of isolation like this. It can be a really lonely road sometimes if you're an entrepreneur. Mm. Um, you're working day in day out and you're by yourself you haven't got a big team and so definitely using zoom having these zoom networking events and um you know whatsapp facebook all of these online avenues are really a great way to also build that network up so therefore it is going digital not then but not then but now and and capitalizing everything as much yes now, um, what about in tapping into resources, local authority mm-hmm. uh, provided? Uh, that's another point which you um, raised you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I think it's something that we often overlook. You know, a lot of business owners, they may not actually operate within their actual borough, the borough that they live in, um, or they may operate, if they've got a pop-up shop or an actual store, they may operate there, but they may not live there. So um, a lot of the time, the resources that the local authority are providing, they just go we miss them. We don't know about them. Um, so what I would really encourage yeah. everyone to do is to just go on their local authority website and go to the, most of them, if not all of them, will have a section which is dedicated to small business owners um, and just see what resources are out there. There are a lot of free resources that the local authorities mm. have to provide to businesses to support them that are in their um, area. You know, your local library as well is always a great source of resources and tools so we have recently partnered with the British Library um, for a startups in London libraries service which is a marketing masterclass which is being run in 10 different boroughs well before the lockdown it was being run in 10 different boroughs around London and that was a service a completely free service which the local authority were providing to small business owners, startups, entrepreneurs, people just with ideas that wanted to, you know, really tap into marketing, understand marketing and how to market their business. And we are delivering that course. Now, because of COVID and because of the lockdown, it's gone online. So even if you don't operate in one of those 10 boroughs now it's open to everybody. And so once you are able to really build that connection and make it a regular thing that you're doing, you know, seeing what your local authority are doing, what they've got on their website, you will come up against um, these different tools and resources. And a lot of the time they are free. Now, tell me now, um, one of the things that it it is said, you're you're a connector, yeah? And you're focusing on building business relationship and partners. So are you focusing on ladies or male as well, or just you're, you're a ladies zone? No, so, I mean, yes. Hustling Hills was born from an idea that Jen and I had, and inevitably we attract women. We are women, so we attract women. The name, yeah. of course, um, you know, it was geared towards women, and it was really geared towards providing a safe environment for women to come to and feel relaxed enough yeah. to talk about business in you know, in a way that they may not have done otherwise. That doesn't mean that we do it to the exclusion of men. We, um, you know, we often have speakers that are men. Our last event, we had um, a COO from Google who, um, Craig Fenton, he is a guy. And so we always try to include the male voice 
in our conversations. Men are yes. always welcome to the events. Um, and it, it's, it's one of those things that we really just want to make sure that underrepresented business owners have the access to tools, resources, information, knowledge, network, the network that is needed. So it's not exclusively for women. Men mm. are more than welcome. I mean, we've even tried to convince you to come to a lunch or two before. So, um, you know, now that things are online, yeah. <laughs> now that things are online, um, it may be an easier introduction to some of the guys to see what everything's about to get that uh, familiarity and comfortability before actually coming to a physical event once the lockdown's lifted. Good, good. So I, I think we have covered it and you have said a lot. A couple of persons said they enjoy that bit there. And of course, ladies and okay. gentlemen, uh, yeah, Jay is also a corporate solicitor working part time in the business, supporting entrepreneurs to work through their problem with a solution focused approach to growth and development. I'll be having uh, Jen Scott at another time um, where she can actually explore on that bit there. Um, the duo. So therefore, is it, uh, I'm Jamaican and sometimes I always um, have my accent. The, the, the yeah. duo. The duo. <laughs> the duo. <laughs> and, and, the last, and the last word um, Jay before you go well just as I said thank um, you very much for this. I think it's great that you are shining a light on the different entrepreneurs and business owners um, that yeah. are coming out of the community and yeah it's really important for us to just support each other work together you know we're stronger together mm. um, as I say really look at the resources that are already out there tap into them and just build stronger connections yeah, and I, and, I, and I echo that as well. I echo that as well because in everything, what I've been seeing is that instead of waiting for things to happen, just make things happen. And that's why I try to just use the platform to bring in different persons, as you'll see. And, uh, and of course, definitely, Jen will complete the process. Jen and Jay. Yeah. And this is Jay, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jay. This is Jay, okay? All right. Well, thank you very much. And, and uh, I think we did a good timing for you as, as you have your other engagement. Uh, I made sure I clarify with you that you weren't going out and uh, <laughs> so if not, I'll send Boris after you. <laughs> yeah, <I got> it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Ron. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, uh, Jason. Yeah. And uh, have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to thank you uh, so much for for coming on today and uh, we made it very quick and very brief and very succinct straight to the point and therefore this is tools and this is um, tips um, three that you can get and you can move with and of course we'll have Jen Scott the second of the duo the, the founder uh, the brain behind um, uh, Hustle and Heels and make sure